Hi, uh, I'm Sam with CN Seamless, and I'm going to be showing you today um, why you need the CPC port installation kit on the hypertherms, how that plugs into the CN Seamless, and then how to install it. So when you buy a machine like this from Hypertherm, it's going to have this style plug that you would plug your, your, your hand torch or machine torch in. When you're using the hand torch, when you push the trigger on the torch, it sends the signal through this to tell the plasma cutter to turn on. But on the machine torch, which is what you're going to use on this machine or really any other kind of plasma table, uh, the machine has no way to tell the Hypertherm plasma cutter to turn on through a switch. So what you do instead is the um, plasma cutter is controlled through this thing called a CPC port, which is just this circular plug that has a couple pins in it. And that's how this machine will talk to the plasma cutter. So kind of run down on how the CNC list does it. You slide this module on the back of the machine, lock that down. Then this cable is just an adapter from this kind of DB9 style plug onto the CPC, which is what the plasma cutter uses. So before we can turn on this Hypertherm 85 and start cutting, I'm gonna show you how to install this kit on a machine. When you buy a Hypertherm plasma cutter, they're all gonna have this little blanked out spot for a CPC port, unless you happen to buy the model that already has this built in. But either way, what you're gonna do is this kit just goes in this little knockout panel, and that's gonna allow you to plug the CNC seamless cable or other plasma table cable into the back of your Hypertherm machine so the machine can control it. So this is gonna go right there. We'll plug it in like that. This right here is the kit we're going to install in the Hypertherm machine. You can buy this from any Hypertherm dealer online, really anywhere. Um, it comes with this manual how to do it. Um, so we're basically going to be doing exactly what's in the manual, but uh, I'd definitely follow along and read this manual to make sure we didn't make any mistakes. Um, the tools you're going to need to get this done are a T20 Torx driver. So I'm going to use this in the impact. Um, you're probably going to want to follow the torque specs that are in the manual for each screw, so I have these little torque screwdrivers for that. And you're also going to need a T10 driver for these screws to actually put on the CPC port. So the first step here is we're going to take this cover off the machine. So once you got those screws out, you can just lift this sheet metal cover right off the machine and set it aside. So the next step is you're going to want to take off this little plastic cover over the PCB on the machine and also set that one aside. You can see inside the machine we've got our cooling fan here. Um, then we've got our air control valves. This is how it turns on and off the compressed air when you actually turn on the machine. Uh, you got the air filter back there, um, kind of the initial power filtering stuff. AC comes in, it gets rectified down to DC. Then we come over here. Um, it's kind of hard to see in the front of the board, but there's just a bunch of solid state switches that it uses to take that rectified DC and uh, turn it into the actual correct voltage for plasma um, and do all the magic the hypertherm does to make the arc work right. So the next step uh, is we have to take off this little fan cover that's on the machine. It's not held in with screws, but with these little plastic clips. Uh, the easiest way to take those off is gonna be with a pair of needle nose pliers. So just grab those and you can uh, take them out that way. So just very carefully, you don't wanna break it. Just go and uh, pop these tabs together. Got it. Once you manage to get that fan off, the next step is to set the little dip switch here to the right voltage divider. So the default for most machines is 50 to 1. Um, and you can see written above here on the silk screen, you've got your options are 21, 30, 40, and 50. Just set the switch here on number 4 high and the rest of these low. And that'll mean the voltage divider on your machine is 50 to 1. If you want to change it, the way to do it is just take a pair of tweezers flip that down and then to put it back up, just push it like that and then make sure the rest of these are, are down. So again, number four for 50 to one.
Next, we're gonna take this board here and install it in the machine. You can see these two little holes that are ready for this board. So now that you have this board screwed into your plasma cutter, you're gonna to wanna to take this wire right here with the red and the black wire and just feed it through this grommet right, right here. And this is a good time to also just remove this little top sheet metal piece up here. So you just take a pair of tweezers and pull this thing through and we'll deal with this in a minute. Just gonna set that like that. All right, so once you fish that wire through the grommet, just take this green ground wire, kind of fish it underneath here, and we're gonna screw it into this in a second, but we need to get the other wire ready for that too. So the next thing we need to do is actually install this part. So we need to feed this so it's underneath all these wires here. So I'm gonna do, take this, feed it underneath all this. Kind of take that tension out of there. And then with this uh, five pin plug we have here, we're gonna again feed this through this top grommet here. Okay, yeah, we're gonna feed it to this top grommet here. Just like that. All right, and we're gonna leave that alone for now. So then the next thing we gotta do is just pop out this little um, protective cover right here. So. Pop that thing out. See, it's got those little locking tabs on there. So you gotta push those in to get it out. So then once you've done that, you wanna take this plug and push it in and you wanna make sure that these three pins that are in a row with each other are on the bottom. So put it like that. And then we're gonna take these screws and screw this thing in. And again, torque it down to 1.1 newton meters or 10 inch pounds. All right, so once that's torqued down, now we need to put this little grounding strap right on here next to the air filter. Okay, so unlike everything else on this machine, this is a T15, not a T20 or T10. So let's take that off. And then put it back in, and this one again, down to 1.7 newton meters. All right, so the next step is we have to put the ground wire on from the actual voltage divider part of the board. So that's this green wire we neglected earlier. Uh, feed it underneath all these wires, and then you're gonna screw it in underneath here. This is grounded to the little heat sink on the back of the machine, so it doesn't look like it's doing anything, but it is. So just take this off. Uh, if you have the RS-485 kit on your plasma cutter, you're gonna have two wires bonded to this, but if you're just putting on the CPC port, you're just gonna have the one ground wire. So we're almost done on this side of the machine. Uh, last thing to do is just clean up these wires a little bit. Uh, we're gonna zip tie them together. So just put a little mini zip tie right here. And then put another one up here. It doesn't say anything about this in the manual, but I think it's probably a bad idea to zip tie it to the air hose since that might move around a little bit. So I'm just gonna do it like that. So we're gonna take off the front panel. First thing to do is take off this air hose. It's a little push to connect fitting. So just push down there and pull this off. Next, uh, very gently kind of rotate this machine around or flip it over. 
and we gotta take off two screws that are on the bottom of this. Uh, these are T20s. All right, so we didn't take the front panel off all the way. There's two little tabs that are pretty hard to get off, but just even bending it forward a little bit helps a lot. Take your two prong wire here and you wanna kind of feed it underneath this top black wire. And we're gonna get it all the way down to the bottom of this board. So underneath this rainbow wire. So we're gonna pull this thing all the way down and we're gonna plug it in. Like, like this. Plug in. You can kind of see from this angle, it's hard to see from where the camera is, but you can make sure the pins are lined up. So push that on and you can kind of feel that it locked it in there. So that one's good. And then for this one that's got the four pins, we're gonna do the same thing we did before, but we're not gonna go all the way down. We're just gonna bring it to right here. So again, we wanna do the same thing loosely. Rotate it like that. Okay, so make sure you're lined up with all the pins. Push that thing in. So there you go. All the wires on. And now we can uh, put this machine back together. You're all done. Do you want to put the uh, hose back on? Yeah. <laughs> uh, you also are going to, before you put this back together, you're going to want to put this hose back on. So just like that. It's just a push and connect fitting. Um, kind of quick spot check you want to do. Make sure this ground wire is on. You torque that down. This one on, torque that down. Uh, all this is screwed on. Uh, make sure you don't have any wires that are going to really chafe on each other really bad. And uh, should be good to go. So put your machine back together and uh, start cutting. And putting this machine back together, uh, I'm probably doing this one way. You're really gonna wanna use your half inch impact driver on a, like, like same torque setting you'd use to put your lug nuts on for all these screws. And uh, that'll keep you from uh, having your plasma cutter fall apart randomly while you're using it. And you also wanna put red Loctite on every single screw. <laughs> And uh, make sure you cross thread every single one of these when you put it back in. That way nobody can uh, tamper with it. <laughs> right, make sure you put this fan on. It's a lot easier to get it on than off. Take this little thing. Stick it back on top of there. Take your cover. And this goes on. It goes on like that, close enough. That's fine. When you're putting the cover back on, make sure you get the fan trial next to the fan. Just like that. And then start them all. Start them all by hand so you don't cross thread them. They're little brass inserts, pretty easy to cross thread. Start the cut.